Good evening. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. We'll go right straight to Phoenix with Gene Miller for the Metal Report. Good evening, Gene. Good evening, Bill. How you doing? Just fine. It's hot down there, isn't it? Yeah, it's getting <laughs> warm. It's cooking. Uh, I think it was 103 or 105, something like that today, so we're right in the middle of summer. Very comfortable up here in the mountains. What is it up there? Well, I don't know, but uh, nobody breaks a sweat that I can see. <laughs> I think I'm ready to move. <laughs> How's the market doing? Uh, it was pretty quiet today. Gold had a high of 382.70, a low of 379.40 to close at 381.10, up 70 cents. Silver had a high of 535, a low of 527 to close at 528, up 4 cents. Uh, platinum had a high of 399, a low of 396 to close at 398.20, up a dollar, and the Dow. Had a high of 37.73, a low of 37.92, to close at 37.5590, down $12.60. And that's what was happening in the market today. One thing I want to ask you: How many people do you figure listen to your program on a on a weekly basis or a daily basis? Any estimates? Well, judging from the mail and the standard formula uh, that we have to figure it out an awful lot. In fact, uh, the experts say that this program is the most listened to shortwave program in the United States, and they estimate the worldwide audience. You, you understand that there are more shortwave radios in foreign countries than in the United States. Obviously, yeah. The estimate of the worldwide audience is 10 million. What do you figure in the United States? I have no idea. We did a uh, survey on how many shortwave radios are in the hands of American citizens, and there are 25 million shortwave radios in the hands of American citizens, but we have no idea uh, how many of those radios are in closets gathering dust, are uh, broken in the trash can, are, uh, are uh, being listened to but listening to another station. Uh, we get enough mail to tell us that we've probably got at least 2 million listeners in the United States. Do you realize, Bill, that if uh, those two million listeners all spent just a hundred bucks on protecting themselves in precious metals, that they could take this market and make it go absolutely bananas? Yeah, you're uh, you're right. They could, and uh, they could also protect themselves while they're at it. If we could get right. enough Americans just to deal in coins and throw the uh, the counterfeit Federal Reserve notes away, we could stop the New World Order in its tracks. Well, I guess those people just want to be, like you say, sheeple, huh? Well, that's what it looks like. Give um, us a call, folks. We'll show you how to do this and do it right. Uh, 1-800-289-2646. I believe that, folks, this isn't a futile exercise in just, uh, you know, converting money or, or buying investments. I believe that we can make a difference if we get off our fannies and, and do something and, and quit trusting in this world system that's ultimately going to rob you blind. And if you can't see it just by reading the what they're printing in their own newspapers, uh, you are sheep being led to slaughter. Give us a call, 1-800-289-2646, buy coins, and uh, let's get some information in your hands and let's get started here. Thank you, Dean. Thanks, Bill. Take care. Talk to you later. That's 1-800-289-2646. Folks, do it right now. Don't procrastinate. And I wasn't joking. If everybody in this country, or enough of us, would just buy coins, take these counterfeit Federal Reserve notes, and buy real money while we can get them to sell it to us, uh, and just use that as a medium of exchange and accept nothing else and deal with nothing else, uh, we could have our country back, literally overnight. We would stop everything in its tracks. Those who are trying to destroy us would find themselves without any monetary backing. Their Federal Reserve counterfeit notes would be worthless overnight. Nobody would take them. If nobody would take them, they're worthless. We could take back our country, cancel the debt by decree, and oppose anybody who opposed that decree with the full might of our military forces. That's the answer. The debt can never be paid back because the interest was never created. And most of the debt itself was never printed as paper money. It was issued in the form of credit 
doled out, paid in the form of checks. Don't believe it? Do your own research. Prove me wrong. We have been sleuthing, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm now going to give you a report on Swindler's List. I mean, Schindler's List. You know, we don't spare anybody. A lie is a lie. And Swindler's I mean, Schindler's List is a lie. It's fiction, ladies and gentlemen. We have fully researched that prison camp, fully researched the position of the buildings and everything. It is a lie that anyone ever strode out on a balcony and shot anyone in the camp. It is a lie. In fact, they have been changing the documentation on the book Schindler's List, first edition, said this. Touchstone, Rockefeller Center, 1230 Avenue of the Americas, New York, New York, 10020. This book is a work of fiction. Names, characters, places, and incidents are either products of the author's imagination or are used fictitiously. Any resemblance to actual events or locales or persons, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. Copyright 1982 by Hemisphere Publishers Limited. Cover art, copyright 1993 by MCA Publishing Rights, a division of MCA Incorporated, all rights reserved. All rights reserved, including the right of reproduction in whole or in part in any form. This Touchstone edition, 1993, Touchstone and Colophone are registered trademarks of Simon and Schuster Incorporated. Designed by Eve Metz, manufactured in the United States of America, 579-1086, Library of Congress, Cataloging and Publication Data. Keneally Thomas, Schindler's List, Schindler, Oscar, 1908 to 1974, Fiction, Holocaust, Jewish, 1939 to 1945, Fiction, World War, 1939 to 1945, Fiction, One, Title. And then it goes into all the ISBN numbers and all of that stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been swindled by Swindler's List. The second edition left out the paragraph which says this book is a work of fiction, names, characters, places, and incidents are either products of the author's imagination or are used fictitiously. Any resemblance to actual events or locales or persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. That was left out of the second edition. But the second edition still has Keneally Thomas Schindler's List, Schindler, Oscar, 1908 to 1974, fiction. Holocaust, Jewish, 1939 to 1945, fiction. World War, 1939 to 1945, fiction. All in the Library of Congress, cataloging and publication data, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it's not saying that Oscar Schindler was fiction, or that the Jewish Holocaust was fiction, or that World War II was fiction. These are subheadings under Schindler's list where you can find the book, and it all states that the book is fiction. The movie is fiction. It is Swindler's list, not Schindler's list. The third edition, ladies and gentlemen, leaves it all out. They have slowly changed the documentation of Schindler's List to leave out any reference to fiction. And beginning, ladies and gentlemen, with the second edition, it says copyright 1982 by Serpentine Publishing Company, Party Limited. You take that for whatever you want. But just thought I'd let you know. Just thought I'd let you know, ladies and gentlemen. You see, they have to do away with guns. They have to make you believe they're doing away with war. And so they have to make you think that as long as someone has guns, they won't be used for self-defense. They won't be used to protect our freedoms, but will be used to kill Jews. And that's not true. Next, what's a better world worth? How about a global income tax? Global income tax, ladies and gentlemen. Among proposals made in the United Nations report 
for improving world living standards is a 0.1% world income tax with the proceeds to go to poorer countries according to a complex formula. Excessive military spending would lead to cuts in the amount received. The tax would be imposed on the income of people in the richest countries, those with average per person earnings over $10,000 a year. Potential revenue is estimated at $20 billion a year. We need a global safety net for the poor, said Speth. He said the proposals, including a fee schedule for countries contributing to the brain drain, are meant to challenge the world to think of solutions to such problems. The report does find some striking successes, some credited to foreign assistance programs. Ladies and gentlemen, if we are not actually under the UN rule by treaty as we speak, how could they even propose such a thing? How could they get any support for it? Who would pay it? How could they force nations to do it? Well, I tell you, they're going to. Next, Orange County Register, Friday, May 27, 1994, Vatican Holocaust Report Unofficial. Uh, apparently, an arm of the Catholic Church wrote a report that confesses that she bears co-responsibility for the Shoah, the Hebrew word for the Holocaust. How about that, folks? The Vatican denies it. However, the New York Times reports that the draft document was presented Wednesday by Hans Hermann Henrichs, a lay theologian of the Catholic Theological Institute in Aachen, Germany, at a meeting of a liaison group of Jews and Roman Catholics in Jerusalem, it speaks of manifold guilt of Catholics for a failure to resist the rise of the Nazis in Germany and the annihilation of Jews during World War II. The draft stunned the Jewish representatives at the gathering. I bet it did. <laughs> I bet it really stunned them. It stunned me when I read this. Okay, folks. We haven't done this in a while. Open phones. 1-602-337-2524. 602-337-2524. Let's hear what's on your mind tonight. Let's talk about what you've been hearing on the hour of the time recently. And uh, see where we go with it. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Hello. I'm... Uh very grateful for your program. I wanted to um, ask what is up with Operation Agile 94, as far as you are aware. As far as I'm aware, as you told, as I told you when I read that report, we could neither confirm nor deny it. I do not believe that it's real. I do not believe, as you heard last night, Linda read, uh, not Linda, but uh, uh, Carolyn read a prepared statement. From me, I was not here, so I could not read it myself, that I do not believe that, in, that patriots are in any danger at this particular time. I have thoroughly analyzed all of the intelligence reports from military activity, troop movements, armor movements, and the world political situation as it stands at this moment, and I do not believe that patriots are in any danger at this time. I believe, based upon all information, that the United States is preparing to go to war, my friend. I do not know which country has been targeted, but based upon the best analysis that we have, it appears that armored units and large numbers of troops are preparing or in the process of being moved to South Korea in preparation for a preemptive strike against North Korea. Should North Korea fulfill its statement? that if we institute sanctions against it, it will go to war against South Korea. We have a lot of troops in South Korea. We could not allow that. I believe that this is not in the best interest of the United States because any move toward North Korea will end up, just as it did before, as a war with Communist China, and we cannot win such a war without the use of nuclear weapons, which might be in the best interest of world government, if you understand what I mean. One other question. Um, also, I have to say, it is possible that the target could be Haiti. But, and based upon our information, we believe it's Korea. I have one other, one other question that might not... Uh, well, how do you feel uh, someone would fare on a bicycle if things got bad? 
I don't know. How do you feel? <laughs> well, I guess I think I'd do all right. Hopefully. Well, I don't know everything. I don't know how you would fare on a bicycle, my friend. You have to determine that yourself. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. 602-337-2524 is the number. And we haven't had open phones in a long time, so tonight is the night. Good evening. You're on the air. No, you're not. You haven't got brains enough. No. You're too stupid, you little pussy. 602-337-2524. The little pussies are out in force tonight. Good evening. You're on the air. Um, yes, Bill? Yes. I'm picking you up on AM in Rochester, New York. That's wonderful. I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but... I could care less. I don't care how you hear me as long as you hear me. All right, I'm spreading the word, uh... Good. We have a TV show on cable access up here. I call Paradigms, and we're speaking to the sheeple here, too. Uh, I read the Linda Thompson letter last week, and we are getting responses from all colors, all political parties. People all see it the same way, and I thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye. Thank you for calling. 602-337-2524. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, sir. I was just calling. I called you once on an earlier show. Uh, you were trying to talk about something, and I'm sorry to bother you, but uh, I have this question. Uh, I've been listening to your show for a little while now, and I was wondering, you know, just what our Illuminati is. Well, you need to do some research, my friend. I've got time tonight to teach you. We've done, uh, what, 40-something hours explaining people uh, what it is. Send us a self-addressed stamped envelope with $1. We'll send you a list of tapes. You can purchase them, listen to them, or you can just go down to your library and look up Illuminati. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 602-337-2524. Just for those of you who may be wondering the same thing, a basic definition of Illuminati is the collective body of those who consider themselves to be illumined and smarter than all the rest of us, and thus they want to decide our future. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. How you doing? This is Ken in Colorado. Pretty good. How you doing, Ken? Excellent. Excellent. I was really uh, glad over the past week and that to hear all the preparedness shows and programs that you're doing out there for the people. Well, you got to turn your radio off, Ken. Okay. And I'm not doing preparedness shows anymore. You're not doing those no more. Oh, no. They're not interested in the truth. <laughs> well, they're better, Bill, because I just came out of Greeley, Colorado, behind a flatbed truck with a military, totally unmarked troop carrier behind it. I just uh, recently took some uh, pictures of uh, things that fly in the sky that are black with that primer on it, you know, because they haven't figured out what they want to paint on them yet. Uh, two different occasions, and one was right close to the uh, home area over here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, I, you know, I don't know how to wake people up either, Bill. <laughs> Maybe they need to stop drinking coffee or something, put no dose in their uh, morning breakfast. We all do the best that we can. And uh, thems that wake up will be forewarned and prepared, and thems that don't will be crying in their beer, and I will have no sympathy for them whatsoever. I've just about shed all the tears I'm going to shed for the sheeple. I'm doing my best, and... Uh, I'm going to go with the people that are awake, and we're going to do the best we can. And uh, those that don't want to know or don't want to wake up or don't care to wake up, uh, there's going to be a point where we won't be able to do anything for them. So to uh, uh, cry over their sorrows will be just wasted tears, in my estimation. That's absolutely true. I think the ones that wake up, though, are the, are the chosen few that are, are meant to keep on walking and do what's right. That's right. It's uh, great talking to you again. That's well, nice to hear from you, Ken. I've been real busy and uh, belatedly happy birthday. Uh, I just uh, was so excited that evening that uh, happened to catch up being your birthday, and I was able to uh, get my uh, short weight back up and operating. Uh, and uh, glad to talk to you. Well, thank you. Kind of speechless. It's really bad times you're in, and nobody's paying any attention to anything. Well, some people are. Well, don't cut everybody short. We well, it's, this is true. This is this, this is. But uh, you think there would be masses more, and uh, you just don't know what to do. I don't, anyways. I get, I get frustrated and, and put, putting the information out, and everybody says, when's the next one, when's the next one, when's the next one? And it's the story of the floods coming, 
and you're standing in the water on the first floor, and a boat comes by to help you, and the guy says, no, God's going to save me. Then he's on the second floor, same thing. Then he's teetering on the roof of the house, water's up his neck, and he drowns, and he stands before God, and he says, God, why did you protect me and not help me? And he looks at me and said, uh, I sent you three boats. What more do you want? Yeah. And, uh, I always have this vision of this big finger pointing down from the sky. And all the sheep will say, why did you do this to us? And God says, because you pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely share that one with you. <laughs> Gotta let you go, Ken. All right. Take care. Thank you for calling. You're welcome. 602. 337-2524 is the number. I'm interested in hearing from you folks. Talk about what you've been hearing on the hour at the time. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. How you doing? Pretty good. Hey, uh, just wanted to, uh, oops, uh, sorry about that. Uh, just wanted to, uh, say hello. And, uh, we had a, a barbecue this weekend and, uh, took the tape recorder out there and had a Cooper fun. And, uh, we got a, a couple of uh, more people uh, informed and uh, a little bit more educated. Good. And uh, it was a, a really good day. And what I wanted to ask you was, uh, have you seen that uh, Iron Mountain videotape by the uh, Christian Intelligence Association, I think it is? Take it, throw it in the trash, get the book, the report from Iron Mountain, and read it. Ah. Stay away from other people's agendas. Okay. That videotape wants to convince you that prophecy is coming true. God is creating the new world order. Right. And I'm telling you right now, if you fall into that crap, you will be rendered impotent. You won't be able to act because you'll believe that you can't resist God. And that's exactly what they want you to think. And that's exactly what they want to happen to you. They want you to be immobilized. They want you to be impotent. They want you to not oppose what's coming so that you'll make... A wonderful little slave. Ah, well, after watching the tape, I was kind of left with this feeling of, of hopelessness. And I thought, wait a minute, I'm going to have to see this again and check this out because something doesn't, it, it, it doesn't fly. <coughs> and, I, and I said, well, and then I had my, my buddy, who he's a casualty member, and he looked at it and he says, well, you know, he says, some of it seems like it's on, on the level, but it, 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 it might be uh, a Trojan, and he said so. Uh, Guarantee it is. It's yeah. designed to make you weak. Yeah, that, that's what it. That's kind of the feeling I got from it. Get the book and read it. Leave out all the uh, religious agenda, and uh, use your own brain to figure it out. Okay, now do, do you know where I can locate a copy of the book? Being in a Try your library. Number one, if it's not in your library, have them do a search through the interlibrary loan system, uh, find out where there's a copy, and get it. Okay. Go down to your bookstore, see if there is, see if it's in print. If it is, order it. Well, that sounds like good advice to me. It's called the Report from Iron Mountain, Probability and Desirability of Permanent Peace. Excellent. I thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Take care, my friend. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. 602-337-2524. Yeah, we're always... This is not a religious program, folks, even though we talk about religion from time to time, and even though... I may tell you what my religious preference is. It's not a religious program. And beware of those who would try to shove their religion or their beliefs or their prophecy down your throat. We're either Americans or we're not. If we're Americans, we have to protect the right of everyone to worship at the altar of their choice. And they also have to protect your right to worship at the altar of your choice. But when we're making decisions, we have to do it with our brain. Not because some preacher told us something, or somebody said, prophecy says this. If, if you die and go to the pearly gates and you're judged, you're going to be judged on what you did or did not do. <laughs> not uh, on your waiting. Uh, nobody's going to like you if you just sit around and wait for God to come and save you. It's not what you're here for. You're here to make a choice between good and evil. And it's your choice. You'll be judged on that, I believe. You make up your mind. You may not believe in anything, and that's okay. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Bill. Uh, my name is Todd. I'm up here in Minnesota. All right, Todd, you got to speak louder. Put the Hi. phone right in front of your mouth and speak louder. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's good. I'm up here in Minnesota. As a matter of fact, Minneapolis. And... Uh, 
This isn't really what I called for, but I'd like to get it in here. Uh, there's a UN flag flying uh, downtown in front of our uh, federal, uh, not federal building, our uh, county courthouse, and I did call to find out why it was there, and the mayor's office thought it was uh, the city flag. <laughs> They thought it was the city flag? That's correct. They're lying to you. Oh, I know. I, I alerted them. That a pack of liars. Yeah. And well, next time you call, tell them you're a liar. We know you're a liar. Everybody knows what the city flag is, and everybody knows what the U.N. flag is. You're lying. Why are you flying the U.N. flag? Now tell me the truth. That's right. Uh, I just I just wanted to call and tell you uh, uh, we do appreciate you out there. Uh, doing everything that you do for us, and some of us are starting to wake up. And I'd like to say, God bless you, Bill Cooper, and thank you very much. Well, thank you. God bless you. Bye bye. Anybody else that's waking up, God bless you too. Just hurry up. Six zero two three three seven two five two four is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. This is Nick. I'm calling from Wisconsin. <clears throat> what I'd like to know is, is, is there any documentation available? for uh, uh, forming a militia. There's probably military documentation, but I'm talking about something maybe that uh, has already been prepared. Yeah, it's called the United States Constitution. Second article in amendment. Okay, but... The next one is your state constitution, which will say something. Have you read your state constitution? Yes, I have. What's it say about the militia? Well, it says we can form one, but... Okay, have you gone to your state law? And because the law will spell out how it's done and what it means and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I, I was thinking about organization and stuff like that and, and general type of types of military movements. And without going into a, a, a technical manual or something, I thought there might be something else out there. Uh, there may be, but we're writing the book here in Arizona. Okay, Bill. Well, then, thanks a lot, and keep the good work, man. But you have to have the law behind you. So the first thing you have to do is research the law, and you have to research every amendment to the law and every addendum to the law. Now, every time you find any reference to the militia in the Constitution or the law of your state or in the federal government, down at the bottom of every one of those references, you'll see whether it's been amended and, and what amended it and uh, what the name of it is or the date or the year or the number, and you have to go research that until you come to the end of the line. When you've got all that done, you'll have your basis in law for forming a legal militia in your state. And remember, it has to be the unorganized militia. 602-337-2524 is the number, folks. And we're taking your calls tonight for as long as you want to talk about what you've been hearing on the hour of the time or whatever is on your mind or what's going on in your area. And as long as you're intelligent. Uh, you don't have to agree, but you must be intelligent. I don't put up for one second with their heads or stupidity. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Is this Bill? Yes, it is. Well, by golly. Uh, my name is Bob Davis. Turn your radio off, Bob. Okay. Hang on. Folks, I'll say it again for about the 5,000th time. When you call a radio station, turn your radio off. Bob Davis from Wichita, Kansas. Hey, Bob. Hey. Oh. Good night, Bob. I don't know, folks. I'll be right back after this very short pause. Yeah, you like that? little fuzzy-headed, stinky guy with uh, no skin came in and dropped it off. Good evening, you're on the air. All right, I'm Dennis, I'm from Arkansas. Hi, Dennis. Uh, unfortunately, I missed the letter the guy was talking about earlier about Linda Thompson. What was the gist of that? Uh, Linda wants to march with an armed militia in Washington, D.C. in September. What do you think about that? Well, I heard your broadcast when you were <clears throat> asking her not to do it. And uh, Then you know my opinion. Uh, well... <laughs> Unfortunately, I share your opinion. I mean, uh, unfortunately, in the respect that, you know, should people do that, they just mow them down. Uh, I have some friends that, that are patriots, and they, they believe that that's absolutely what would happen. Well, it wouldn't just mow them down. It would be an excuse to declare martial law and declare every patriot in the country a terrorist bent upon overthrowing the United States government. There's been an awful lot of activity down here. Uh, met somebody in the state government, one of those guys who wouldn't tell me exactly what he did, 
But I had previously met somebody at, at a gun show who had told me about some friends that were hiking like north of Eureka Springs. They had ran into a, a detention camp. Well, unless you can prove that, uh, we can't do that kind of stuff but in here. It was we, a, we don't deal in rumors. Okay. Well, well, we'll forget the detention camp. But there has been an incredible amount of military activity down here. Just today, and I, and I spent five years in the Army, between 71 and 76, but today I saw two flatbed trucks carrying look like a power plant, O.D. Green. And now, you know, I've heard, I live in rural America, and I've heard other stories about all these stickers going on signs. Well, we saw a Marine with a clipboard a couple of months ago going around looking at these signs. And now we're starting to get all kinds of scotch light stickers on our signs. So we're waiting scrape to them get, off and oh, throw them away or spray paint them? Well, we're going to spray paint them. <laughs> yeah, just, get, just, I've already tried to tear one off. They're just, like just totally get, glued on tight. We'll get rid of them. We'll do that. Oh, and uh, hey, uh, you ever thought of a political career? Not interested. Not interested. <laughs> not at this time. Not, okay. not ever. Okay. Well, good luck to you. We'll keep listening. You're welcome. Take care. And thank you for calling. 602-337-2524. Good evening. You're on the air. Shut it off. Yeah. Well, he said shut it off. So I did. 602-337-2524. Folks, if you're not going to talk, don't call. Don't waste my time and don't waste the time of the listeners. Don't even bother if you're not going to talk. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. This is Ron from West Palm Beach, Florida. Hi, Ron. Hey, I was wondering how your uh, case has come along with the SEC guy that didn't uh, want to give you a test for your ham license. Well, we're still researching it in the law library. Oh, okay. It's going to come on fine. We got a yeah. We got a disc uh, with uh, the names and addresses of all the uh, uh, licensed ham operators and uh, amateur operators in the state of Arizona, and we're going to find out who this guy is real quick, and pretty soon he's going to hear a knock at his door, and we're going to stick a subpoena in his hand. There you go. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't like brown shirts, and I don't like uh, SS, and I don't like uh, people who think that they fit into any of those categories, and uh, especially volunteers who are supposed to help people uh, through things, uh, taking it upon themselves to make up uh, rules that don't exist. Those kind of guys are just, uh, they, they're, they're closed-minded, actually. They're brown shirts. Yeah, yeah. Bill, uh, I'm <laughs> interested in getting involved with the CAGI, and uh, sometime could you give us the address that I can mail some uh, information to you? Same address we always have. Okay, I don't have anything on you. Guys. Listen at the end of the program, and you'll hear the address. All right, thank you. Bye You're bye. welcome. 602-337-2524. Every night, when the pro after I sign off and our music finishes, WWCR gives out our address and phone number. Folks, if you listen carefully, you can write it down. Every once in a while, I'll give it out. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Cooper. Yes. Well, I did miss you in Phoenix uh, when you came down here. And I, was, I happened to go to the the seminar, Dr. Coleman, and uh, I tried to get a hold of that Dale, who give you a hard time uh, to getting you to me the license. Dave is his name. Yeah. I think he's in a Scottsdale Amateur Radio Club. He belongs to something called Triarch. Was on, there's only two things on his name tag, Dave and Triarch, whatever Triarch is. Well, I, I've been trying to get a hold of him. Now I'm going to talk to that guy. Anyway, I I just want to put my two cents into Korea. Uh, Korea is a 40th state of the United States or 51st state. Korea? Yes. Not at all. Not at all. No. So, my opinion, we should have just left them alone. Well, that's absolutely correct. We had no business in Korea. We had no business in World War II. We had no business in World War One. We had no business in Vietnam. We had no business in in Desert Storm. We had no business in Somalia. We had no business wherever we're going right now, and we're going somewhere. We had no business in Panama. We we was involved about at least what forty wars since World War Two. Well, they say they're not wars. Well, they're just uh, little theaters for the sheeple. 
make them think that there's a big enemy out there so that they can funnel vast sums of money out of their pockets to fund the research and the development of the technology which will use be used to enslave them and govern them in the New World Order. Also, probably they're just using uh, practicing on those third world countries. No. Or they work the new weapons. System. No. No? Nope. At Yalta, the decision was made between the superpowers, and this was, it was actually made before the war. We have maps that we have found that were printed before World War II started showing the exact division of the countries of the world post-war. And that's exactly the way it turned out. We know that at Yalta, the superpowers decided that uh, that the, the only wars fought in the future would be surrogate wars fought with third world countries, and it would be used to fund the uh, development of technology and the development of the military forces, which will be used as the world police force to subjugate and control people in the New World Order. We know that it was decided at Yalta that in all of those wars between World War II and the formation of the New World Order, there would be no territorial gains by anyone, and there hasn't been. Well, I have to agree with you. By the way, um, I just discovered uh, on uh, 49 Meter, your program about two months ago, and uh, I I go to gun shows just about every one of them in Phoenix, and uh, I pass it on to uh, the frequency to other people. I, I pass it on to Radio Shack, the people I work with. But uh, I, I noticed something. Some people are just, majority of the people are so stupid intellectually. They don't even know what dividing East and West of the United States. Well, they don't know much of anything. I just uh, was down in Phoenix, went down to the bar for a drink at the Embassy Suites. And sat there and listened to a whole bar full of people talk about nothing but sports. That was their whole world. Yeah. They were oblivious to anything else happening and, frankly, didn't really care, I don't think. Anyway, i got to let you go. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for calling. your program, and uh, I continue listening. Thank you for calling. Good evening. 602-337-2524 is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Um, I'm calling... I'm from Olympia, Washington. Good. And um, I'm calling about the possibility if we go into war with Korea, um, what would the chances be with, uh, let's say, California that we might declare martial law and, like, some fake nuclear terrorist attack or the race relations between Koreans and Americans, if this will be played up as a, you know, a device just to condition the people to, um, you know, accept that, like, FEMA and that these agencies are, you know, martial law is designed to um, help everybody, you know, help the country during these times. All of those things are possible, but I prefer to deal with things that uh, happen as they come along rather than sitting around thinking up things. They could do anything. We don't have to go to war with Korea for them to start that thing. I mean, there have been black organizations that for years have been stating outright that if they don't get what they want, they're going to go to war against Whitey in 1995. Okay. Um, I They've been on Geraldo. They've been on, uh, what's her name? Uh, what is her name? I forgot her name. Oprah. Oprah. Yeah, Oprah, whatever crony they got. Um, and, and Donahue and all of them. And, uh, and not just one group, but many different groups. Okay, I, and you have white groups saying the same thing, and then you have, uh, you know, you, so they don't need to go to war with Korea to bring about the situations that you're talking about. I mean, those could happen at any time. Uh, because, I mean, the L.A. riots previous, it seemed like the government amped up something just to create tension and implement, you know, a martial law, and, um, you know, I was just wondering, you know. Well, don't wonder. <laughs> could happen at any time, but deal with what happens and not with what could happen. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. Folks, deal with reality. Don't sit around thinking up whole fictitious scenarios. Just be prepared for anything and try, try to educate as many people as you can of as many different races and religions and cultures as you can because we're all being used and pitted against each other. None of us created these scenarios. We've been taught these things. We've been 
conned and manipulated and scammed into these things. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, uh, I was wondering if you could give me some advice on what to do when we find ourselves right in the middle of a military operation with armed vehicles all around. Uh, I was on uh, Fort Drum this afternoon. Uh, it's up near Watertown, uh, New York, uh, north side of, uh, well, just about 20 miles south of the uh, Canadian border in uh, upstate New York. And I had a camera with me, but... Uh, felt rather intimidated. And I, I, I don't know, is it, I didn't see any signs anywhere to say uh, this is not a public area, stay out of here. It's a posted highway, Highway 29, going through the military reservation. Uh, it's, there were signs saying caution, military traffic, and so forth, but nothing about... Uh, What's the point? Are you beating around the bush? What's the point? Uh, if I pick up a camera and take a picture and somebody... Uh, comes along and says, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Did, uh, did you pick up a camera and take a picture? No, I didn't. Then why are you talking about something you didn't do? What, what's the point? What do, you, what do you want to tell us? Um, what do you do? It, do I have the legal right to take a picture? Uh, well, you'll find out, won't you? Did you see any signs that said you couldn't? No, no, that's the point. Okay, well, you intimidated yourself. You pick up your camera and take the pictures until somebody tells you you can't. Okay, uh, very good. I've... Nobody told you you couldn't. You decided you couldn't. Uh, something of interest, by the way, there was a all-white aircraft sitting on the uh, tarmac up there near the terminal building. Mm -hmm. uh, no markings. Uh, aside from that, several Blackhawk helicopters, like we've been hearing everybody talk about. But uh, that's what I was really like to get a picture of that aircraft. Uh, well, I don't know what kind of aircraft it was or why it was white. Uh, some some military aircraft are white. Air Force uses white Learjets. Navy uses some uh, white aircraft. Uh, Sometimes they're white and gray. Um, traditionally, though, white is a United Nations. My basic question to you is, am I violating any federal or state law or anything by taking pictures of military operations uh, when there's uh, nothing marked around the area? If there's no sign that says you can't take pictures until somebody tells you you can't, you can. Okay, very good. And if you have press credentials, there's not a damn thing they can do about it. Unfortunately, I don't. So far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can uh, get some documentation for you. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. 602-337-2524 is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Mr. Cooper? Yes. I hold you at the highest regard that you can possibly be. But the only thing I was wondering about tonight, I hadn't heard you speak of it anymore, is the Galileo spacecraft that's going to Jupiter. What more can I say? <laughs> well, that's... What, what would you have me say? I've said as much as I can say. <laughs> I don't know anything else to say, do you? No, I really don't, but no. that's absolutely amazing. Well, I don't. I uh, can't uh, talk about the same things every night unless i got something new to say, and I don't have anything new to say. Yeah, do you think that it will at night? Oh. I have no idea. I've told you what I know. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cooper. You're welcome. 602-337-2524. Folks, if you hear me talk about something and you don't hear me talk about it anymore, it's because I don't have any more to say. And uh, I don't like to repeat myself on these programs. And some people call and say, why don't you pay Carl, play Carl Klang's music more? And I don't play it more because people get tired of it after a while. And I don't want them to get tired of what they hear on this program. I would like it to be fresh. I like it to be informative. I like to be educating you all the time, not talking about the same thing over and over and over again. You want to hear that stuff? Listen to Tom Valentine. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. How you doing? Good. Uh, calling from uh, Florida, Jacksonville. And, uh, uh, you know, you, were, you had a guest on, or, or a guy on a little while ago was talking about uh, all of the uh, little black bugs he saw in the skies and one thing or another, and uh, of course we've got them down here. We've got pictures of. You need to put the phone right in front of your mouth and talk louder. We've got. Uh, That's we, better. We've got a picture of a Russian tank traveling down Interstate 10 on the back of a flatbed, uh, headed toward uh, I guess Tallahassee, going west. And this weekend, uh, we have a place called Blunt Island, and Jacksonville is primarily a. Uh, a, a, a big uh, shipping industry through here. And uh, there's a place out on Blunt Island that's, that's blocked off. It has gates and uh, so forth and so on. You can't get in there. 
Well, that's normal for a military installation. What's your point? It's restricted, but anyway, this weekend, uh, Russian, a Russian cruise ship pulled in there and docked. And during the whole weekend... Uh, a Russian cruise ship pulled into a military base and docked? Yeah. yeah. Well, it wasn't a military base. It's just a, it's just a restricted area. Well, it's got to be military. I mean, how can it be restricted if it's not military? Well, I guess it could be uh, considered military. But anyway, this, this ship pulled in there, and, and uh, there were some questions asked. And uh, this ship was uh, evidently contracted from the United States through Russia through the uh, airlift of the Sea Lift Command. And uh, they were offloading people. We had some guys out there that had belonged to our organization who were cutting grass. And they watched from a distance. They couldn't get close enough, but they watched people get off get off of the ship and get onto buses with docked out windows. Did you get photographs? Well, they weren't able to get photographs at that particular time. Okay, I want everybody out there to listen to me. I want you to stop this all this bullshit. I don't want you to go anywhere without a camera. I don't want you to go anywhere without a tape recorder. And if you've got a video camera, I don't want you to go anywhere without a video camera. I'm tired of all of you wanting to know what's going on and walking around with no preparation whatsoever, depending upon me to provide you with everything and save your miserable butts, and I'm getting tired of it. I want all of you to start acting responsibly. Listen, uh, I will be glad to send you pictures of the tank and the, uh, and the black dots in the sky. Wonderful. If you want. Great. And if another ship pulls in, I want pictures of uh, people getting off the ships and on the buses. All right. We're going, we're going to get them. Great. But uh, I will send copies of them to you when we do get them. Wonderful. Uh, we've got a nice little group down here, and uh, we're, you know, we're getting ready. Uh, we're, um, it's, it's, it's like the militia in Montana. I keep hearing this, but I keep hearing people that aren't ready. Uh, everybody should have a camera. Everybody should have a tape recorder. Everybody, if you have a video camera, you should have a video camera with videotape in it. Batteries charged, ready to use at a moment's notice. You should be preparing your militia, getting organized. It's like the militia in Montana. They were going to prevent the government from taking Red Beckman's farm. Then they all went home and went to sleep. You know, folks, and I'm not talking to you personally. I'm talking to everybody out there. I, I'm tired of hearing irresponsible behavior. This is our country. We have to save it. Nobody's going to save it for us, and I can't do everything. You're absolutely right, Bill. Uh, we have really got to put our minds together and start working together and try to get some of this information documented. That's correct. Uh, anyway, I'd like to say God bless you, you know, and you're doing a great job, and uh, keep up the good work. Well, thank you, and God bless you, too. All right. 602-337-2524. I mean it, folks. You better get your act together. It's like you're all playing some silly little game out there, and I'm just really sick of it. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Phil. Uh, have you heard anything in regard to this new bacteria that's eating uh, people's flesh uh, somewhat uh, I'm just curious as to whether this is a scare tactic or... I have no idea. I don't know anything any more about it than what you know. Yeah, I'm just curious. Also, is your... What's the name of your book? Uh, just so that I want to see if I can get it on uh, cassette because I'm legally blind. Behold a Pale Horse. And uh, you can get it through that outfit up in New York for the blind. Okay. They have it. They have it. They have it on tape. Okay, and uh, keep up the good work. We're behind you, and, you know, like you say, things are getting bad. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get out of this together. Certainly not getting any better, are they? No, no it's getting worse and worse uh, all the time. Also, on that bit up at Fort Drum, from what the information I've got, they spent about $1.2 billion. That's the 10th Mountain Division up there. So uh, that's something to think about. That's one of those... Special units with no armor and in and out type things. Yeah, from but, what, uh, what I understand, uh, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Okay, keep up the good work. Good talking to you again. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Our troops are going somewhere, folks, and as I read to you the other night, and this was official, ladies and gentlemen, from the Pentagon, there will be joint Russian United States maneuvers held in this country this summer. It'll be in all the newspapers. It will be the excuse needed to bring in crack Russian troops into the United States. And you'll see them all over the place. And they'll say, oh, it's the maneuvers. 
And uh, the excuse for not having them in Russia is Russian nationalists don't want American troops on Russian soil. Well, I'm telling you right now, American nationalists better get hot on the Pentagon and hot on your congressman and say you don't want Russian troops on United States soil. Are you going to have them here? And before you know it, you may not have a country. Good evening. You're on the air. And for backup to that, folks, read Mikhail Gorbachev's book, Perestroika. Hi, Bill. Hello. Hey, this is Bob again. By God, I'm glad I got through to you again. Uh, Did we you were... call once already tonight? What? Did you call tonight already? Yeah, I got... Uh... All right, Bob. We don't have that much time for people to be calling two and three times a night. 602-337-2524. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Cooper. Yes. Carl from Massachusetts. Just a moment of your time, sir. Hello, Carl. Uh, Governor Weicker of Connecticut uh, announced yesterday... He wants a ban on the carrying of all concealed weapons in the state of Connecticut. And this is part of his proposed legislation before the uh, state senate in Connecticut. How old are you? 41. You're 41? Well, then you're a part of the legal militia, aren't you? Yes, but I'm in Massachusetts. But I was pointing it out to your listeners. Doesn't matter. What is going on across the country? You're missing my point. If you are a member of the militia, it is forbidden to mess with your right to keep and bear arms whatsoever. Whether it's concealed, whether you're carrying it down the street or whatever. What does the law say in your state about the militia? In every state I know of, it's every man or boy between the ages of 17 or 18 and 45. Okay, it happens to be in Massachusetts it's legal. In Connecticut it's illegal. What's illegal? Um, a militia. They actually have it on the books. Well, no state can legislate any law that conflicts with the Constitution. That's also the law. I agree. One other <laughs> quickly, the uh, regarding your your uh, Babylon uh, mystery Babylon series that you did, I do have that. And at one point, I wanted to bring out maybe you have some information on it. All of the women on all the talk shows are showing up in all black, head to foot. And I've talked to people that are involved in Golden Circle, and cannot find anyone that has knowledge as to why these women are wearing black. And I didn't know if it was part of a Khazarian cabal or something perhaps you had some familiarization with. I have no idea, but if I wanted to know, the first people I would ask would be those women. Well, if I could contact the people in Hollywood or New York, perhaps they'd give me those answers, but I thought maybe you might have some insight into that or some of your listeners might. No, I certainly don't. Sorry. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, folks, you can sit out there and hope for somebody to come along. Maybe your prince will come and save you. Maybe not. In any event, good night, and God bless you all.